Hi, I'm Dwight Crossstreet. I'm the Tech Support Supervisor here at Merit USA in Cape Coral, Florida. Uh, some of you I already know, some of you I don't. Uh, um, if you need to get a hold of us for any reason, whatever, uh, give us a call at 1-800-963-7487, extension 103, and that'll put you right into the tech queue. Uh, you can also email us. Uh, you can email Rohan at rsmith at meritusa.com. You can get a hold of Excel at avader at meritusa.com, or you can get a hold of myself at dcrossstreet at meritusa.com. What we're going to do is try to put together some videos here to help you out in the field to uh, kind of give you an idea how to set up the product, um, a little bit of troubleshooting on it, uh, and hopefully uh, show you how to get the best out of the product. And uh, this will help to give the end user the, the best uh, product experience that they can have. Uh, I'm not going to go to, uh, the videos will also be available on our website. Uh, just give us a day or so to get them uploaded and get them on uh, all, all the pointers pointed at them. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the specifications of the products. Uh, you can get that either on our website, uh, out of our catalogs, out of the, the uh, slicks, or uh, even uh, you know, through the product videos on the ones that we have the product videos on. Um, so, uh, let's get started. Uh, if you run into anything where you need a video to actually show you, um, like how to put something together or you're having issues trying to troubleshoot something or something of that nature, uh, just let us know and we'll try to put together a video and either put it up on the website or if it's a short enough video, we can uh, email it to you. Um, Today we're going to take a look at the our line of beds, uh, kind of show you what they're all about, uh, what the differences are between them, and uh, how to set them up, and a little bit of basic troubleshooting on them. So, so let's get going. This is our B320 full electric bariatric bed. In a full electric bed, three sections of the bed are motorized. The head section can be raised or lowered by the motor. The foot section can be raised or lowered by a motor. And the height of the bed can be raised or lowered by the action of a motor. On a semi-electric bed, only the head section and the foot section can be raised or lowered by a motor. The height of the bed can be changed by a manual hand crank on the footboard. Today we're going to take a more in-depth look at our B211 semi-electric bed. Take a look at the operation, the unboxing, the assembly, and some troubleshooting hints on the unit. Let's take a look at how the hand control or the hand pendant works. If you press the top button underneath the picture of the head section, the set head section will go up. If you press the top button underneath the picture of the foot section, the foot section will go up. If you press the bottom button under the picture of the head section, the head section will go down. Pretty exciting, huh? And it stands to reason if we push the bottom button under the picture of the foot section, the foot section will go down. If we push the top middle button, the head and the foot section both will go up. And if we push the bottom middle button, the head and the foot section will both go down. Pretty logical. Your B211 will be shipped in two boxes. The first box will have the head and foot section in it. It will contain the head section, which is the section that pivots up about one foot from the center. You also notice in the center, it's the one that has the hook that connects over the pins in the foot section. And it has the foot section. You'll notice the foot section is the one that pivots up in the middle. It's also the one that has the pins. Also on this box you'll find a high-low bar. This is used for raising and lowering the height of the bed. It will be compressed when you receive it in the box. you also find a shipping bar in this box. It can be discarded after the bed is unpacked. The head and footboard box contains, of course, 
the headboard. It's easily recognizable. There is no clip under it for the hand crank and there is no hand crank attached to it. And the footboard. The footboard will be easily recognizable by having the hand crank installed on it. If you have an older version, it will have the slot for the hand crank and a clip underneath to hold the hand crank onto the footboard. Inside you'll find a smaller box that contains four wheels, two with brakes and two without. Also a tool kit and a Ziploc bag that contains two short pins with holes for retainers and the retainers, four right angle pins, and four pins with rings attached to them. You'll also find a long box that contains the motor and the hand controller pendant. Even though it's called a one motor bed, there are actually two motors inside a one piece unit that contains the motors and the controller. If you'll open up the head section and the foot section and lay them on their side, it'll make them much easier to work with. When putting together the B211, you'll notice if you have the head section and the foot section in a 90 degree or greater angle, it is hard to get the hooks over the pins but if you move it in to where the other ends are closer to each other and the angle is less than 90 degrees then all you have to do is just push down slightly on the hook and it will go right over the pin. Once you've reached that point all you have to do is straighten the bed out and it will be ready to put the head and footboards on it. Next, with the head and foot section straight, where they overlap each other, insert one of the three quarter inch pins into the hole. Next, take one of the retainer keys and in insert it into the hole on the other side of the pin and snap it into place. We are now ready to connect the springs. Lift up on the foot section to release the tension. Then take the hooks from the head section and hook them into loops in the foot section. You can now lower the foot section back down in preparation for installing the headboard and the footboard. We're now ready to install the headboard and the footboard onto the frame. We'll start with the foot section. Lift the foot in the frame and position the footboard at an angle so that the bottom pin is directly under the bottom hook of the frame. With the bottom pin in place, tilt the top of the footboard toward the center of the bed. The top and the bottom hook should now drop into place. Repeat essentially the same procedure for the headboard. Make sure that you lift at the bottom of the frame instead of the upper spring frame. As if you lift on the spring frame, it will lift off the bottom frame and will not lift the whole bed. You are supplied with two wheels without the brake and two wheels with the brake. The wheel with the lever on the side is the one that has the brake on it. Installing the wheels is easy. Simply lift up on the bed and take the stem and slide it up into the receptacle on the leg of the bed. Repeat the process with all four wheels. You should have one with the brake and one without the brake on each end of the bed. It's better if you place the brakes diagonally from each other. To Next, we're going to take the four right angle bent pins and place them in between the pins on the frame in the little hole. This will limit the movement of the headboard versus the frame and keep it from coming out. Repeat this step for all four corners. Next, we're going to install the high-low bar. If you look at one end, there's a chrome bar inside. The other end has a painted bar inside. The high-low bar is shipped compressed to save space. About 8 inches from the end that has the painted bar insert, you'll find a spring-loaded button. To press this button and pull on the chrome section to extend it out. It will pop into the next hole. Advance it through each of these holes until it gets to the number 5 hole. 
You may have to adjust it later, but that hole is usually the one that is close. Underneath the headboard, you'll find a little gearbox with a shaft sticking out with a pin through it. Take the end of the high-low bar and slide the slots over that pin. Now we'll take the other end of the high-low bar, compress it, and slide the slots on that end over the pin on the footboard. Now you'll want to take the hand crank and crank the bed up, making sure that it moves up evenly both from side to side and from end to end. Now crank the bed up to the desired height and take the four pins that have the ring attached, insert them into all four legs at the highest hole available. This is a safety measure and will keep the bed from dropping should something happen to the headboard or the footboard. We're now ready to install the mattress. If you look on each end of the spring frame, you'll find what appears to be a handle. This is actually a guide to keep the mattress in place so it won't move completely to one end to the other. This keeps the patient from getting their hands or feet stuck between the mattress and the headboard or footboard. Snug one end of the mattress up against one of the guides. Then press the other end down and tuck it into the opposing end. The B211 is normally sold with R2021 full length bed rails. Here you see the two spring-loaded mounting bars and only one of the bed rails is shown for clarity. You will notice on the spring frame between the second and third spring on both ends there's a V-notch. With the knob down and facing the center slide one of the chrome sections into the notch on the other side of the bed, compress the rod, and insert the other one into the notch on this side. Repeat the process with the other end of the bed, sliding the chrome hook into the slot on the opposite side of the bed, compressing the bar. I like to use my knee for a little help there, and then slide it in the, to the slot closest to you. Now it's just a matter of extending the rail out and inserting it in the receivers on both ends. Pull the knob towards the center and adjust the rail to the desired height on both ends. As you have seen, the B211 is a fairly simple bed, not really a lot to go wrong, but if something does go wrong, let's take a look at what we can check to find out what caused it. Make sure you have the motor installed so that the motors are pointing away from the bed. There are also symbols embossed on the ends of the motor showing which end is the head and which section is the foot section. If installed incorrectly, it could damage the motor. If you look on the motor, you'll see a connection for a 9 volt battery. Should the motor get stuck in the up position, the battery should give you just enough power to get the sections back down again. That of course won't help if it's mechanically jammed. To see if the issue you're having could possibly be a mechanical one, disconnect the motor and remove it. Try lifting each section up to see if there's anything that appears to be bent or is jamming. Through the years, there have been improvements made to the motor and the hand controller pendant. Unless you have an older motor and pendant, it shouldn't be of any concern. But should you somehow end up with a mix of old and new units, here's what to look for. If you have the correct motor and pendant, the cord should lay across the motor when plugged in. If you look at the plug, there's a little dimple on one side. That should be on the same side as the cord on the new units. On the old pendant, you'll notice the dimple is on the side opposite the cord. If this old pendant were plugged into the new motor, the cord would go away from the motor instead of across it. Normally, this won't be an issue unless you're mixing old units with new units. When we send out a warranty, we will send out both the pendant and the motor, so it won't be an issue there. If either section doesn't work, try swapping pendants to see if that's the problem. 
If neither section works, you might also check to see if you have power at the outlet by plugging a known working light or another appliance into the outlet and trying it. If it still appears that the issue is either the motor or the pendant and the unit is under warranty, give us a call and we'll send them both out to you. So there you have it, the B211 semi-electric bed, one of our star performers. You see here a, a B320 bariatric bed. We'll have videos online to show you how to set up and troubleshoot them also. If you were hesitating carrying bed lines, you can see the beds are not all that difficult to put together and take care of. Future webinars will cover power chairs and scooters. We'll show you how to use the handheld programmers to set them up, and we'll show you how to troubleshoot them. We'll also show you how to set up and adjust our manual lines of chairs and walkers and the patient aids. Hi, I'm Dwight Crossstreet. I'm the tech support supervisor here at Merritt USA in Cape Coral, Florida. Uh, some of you I already know, some of you I don't. Uh, um, if you need to get a hold of us for any reason, whatever, uh, give us a call at 1-800-963-7487, extension 103, and that'll put you right into the tech queue. Uh, you can also email us. Uh, you can email Rohan at rsmith at MerrittUSA.com. You can get a hold of Excel at avader at MeritsUSA.com or you can get a hold of myself at dcrossstreet at MeritsUSA.com. What we're going to do is try to put together some videos here to help you out in the field to uh, kind of give you an idea how to set up the product, um, a little bit of troubleshooting on it, uh, and hopefully uh, show you how to get the best out of the product. And, uh, this will help to give the end user the, the best uh, product experience that they can have. Uh, I'm not going to go to, uh, the videos will also be available on our website. Uh, just give us a day or so to get them uploaded and get them on uh, all, all the pointers pointed at them. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the specifications of the products. Uh, you can get that either on our website, uh, out of our